Good morning. Welcome to our next session, brought to you by Jessica Day of Dropbox and Lily Zhang of Instacart, on the topic, how to scale your startup while staying human first, from seedling to hyper growth. Jessica is a content and community building marketer, who is currently the customer marketing manager for Dropbox's HelloSign. She uses her entrepreneurial experience and her background in creative writing to illuminate customer stories and build relationships across a scaled B2B SaaS customer base. Prior to this role, she was a co-founder and chief marketing officer at IdeaScale, leading idea management software for the enterprise and government. She volunteers for sustainability organizations and lives in Napa, California. She holds an MFA in English, creative writing from the University of Washington. Lily is Senior Director of Engineering of Fulfillment Experience at Instacart, leading over 100 in the engineering team. Her expertise spans social media, e-commerce, and marketplaces. Lily co-chairs and serves as a board member of Silicon Valley Leadership Community, a nonprofit community with hundreds of leaders in tech. I'm looking forward to this session. Please join me in welcoming them to the stage. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining our session today, our workshop, How to Scale Your Startup While Staying Human First, From Seedling to Hyper Growth. We've got HelloSign and Instacart here to share some stories, but just wanted to let you know that we will be monitoring the Q&A feed throughout. So feel free at any point to send in your question, chat to us, and we'll be chatting back. Um, I also wanted to let everyone know that we'll be sharing some resources that might be good tools for you at your startup, some templates you can use, the HR checklist, uh, Dropbox's virtual first toolkit. So be ready to scan some QR codes, but also if you don't want to do that, feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn, mention this session, and I'll follow up with a message that has links to all of those resources. But in the meantime, um, I guess I'll start by introducing us starting with myself. So I am Jessica Day, and I will be playing the role of the seedling in our workshop today. Right now, I'm the customer marketing manager at HelloSign, which is a software that organizations actually use for the recruiting and onboarding and retention of their employees. And what's really great about it is we get to work with startups and founders and sales teams, and sometimes get to work with great large scale customers like Instacart too, but the reason why I like working with those early stage entrepreneurial uh, leaders is because I was once the co-founder of a SaaS startup called IdeaScale. Um, for those of you who don't know, which is probably many of you, IdeaScale is crowdsourcing software. It's used by organizations of all sizes to crowdsource solutions to their problems, like everything from what should our ice cream flavor be to something consequential, like how should we adapt to climate change? But as many of you, I'm sure, feel as a co-founder with that company, although I was their marketing leader, I often was asked to do different things, wear multiple hats, meaning that sometimes I was helping with job postings. It meant that sometimes I was invested in hiring or interviewing. And for a lot of you, I'm sure, as it was for me, I didn't have any background in HR, so I was learning how to do a lot of these on the fly. So. Many of the things that we shared today, many of the questions that we are asking each other as we prepared for this are things that I wish I had known or thought of when I was first getting started as a founder. And I'll let Lily introduce herself. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Lily. Currently, I'm a senior director of engineering in SCART. Uh, before that, I was a founder and a CTO too in uh, Renaissance Collective, is a social commerce company. Uh, my experience with um, my startup and also Instacart is um, it's a very, very interesting journey when you are scrambling and then we are growing, when you are when you are goes, going through the hyper goals every single day. It seems to be a very different day uh, from before. So let's move forward. So one of the first things that I wanted to talk about um, was about the landscape that I found myself in as a founder. One of the things that might be different for many of you than it was for IdeaScale is that IdeaScale was a bootstrapped startup the entire time. We didn't ever do funding. Um, so for that reason, though, our focus was very much on efficiency and um, how we could organically grow. And that meant that sometimes, even though we were in the same marketplace looking for talent, 
we weren't able to compete at the same level when it came to things like compensation. And then a lot of the things that we found valuable at the start of our startup journey, things like unlimited PTO or the ability to telecommute or our really excellent parental leave, they had become like table stakes for most companies of all sizes. Um, so we really had to figure out what our unfair competitive advantage was as a startup, as opposed to some of these scaled organizations. I remember actually helping a colleague prepare an offer letter for someone who then received an offer for Google. And that really brought home, like, we are working in the same pool of talent. We have to be able to offer them something unique. And that's how we started to think of ourselves. And I think one of the most important ways that we can distinguish ourselves as startups is our agility. You know, the teams are smaller, the processes are less, the uh, policies are kind of undefined still. So it's much, much easier to move more quickly. And I'll talk more about that in a second. But I also think that there are a lot of benefits that we can create um, that might not be scalable for some of these larger companies. So I just wanted to give a few of those um, as food for thought about how you could be creative as well. Um, one of those, one of my favorites, because it was one I participated in, was our study abroad program, which was if there was an employee that was interested in travel or international experiences that we then put on the roadmap the ability to maybe go and do some international expansion for us. Um, in my case, I went with a colleague. Uh, we would meet with the existing customer base there, see what we could do to service or grow the account also, though interview them, learn from them, and then make recommendations to the company based off of those experiences. It was really cool because it was a great way for anybody who participated in it to feel some ownership over the growth of the company, but it was also a really unique um, and fun benefit for those who got to participate in it. This is one of the, uh, our employees there by the van that she rented when she was doing the Australia trip. Um, another thing that I think is really hard to replicate at all those larger scale companies are company retreats. You can do it at the team level, but not at the all company level. So if the team met their our sales goals for the year, we would all go on a trip together. In this photo here that I have on the slide, we all went to Mexico together, but we went to other places too, including a year where we were supposed to go to Tahoe. Um, we had a lot less success that year because it was the year of the snow apocalypse here in California, and one half of the attendees couldn't even get to the mountain because they were like not allowed through because of avalanche risk, and the other half that had gotten there first was stuck in a hotel without electricity, scrounging peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Um, so, but for even for this event, the thing that's really nice about these all company retreats is not only the incentive that you're offering to employees, but the opportunity to build and get to know each other. You get to talk to people you're not collaborating with on a daily basis. You make new connections and it's really a chance to build your culture, especially when you are a virtual company. And then this third example, I, I'm talking about how we would look to our, our employees who said maybe they wanted to speak from the TED stage at some point later in their life. And then we would say, well, maybe we should pitch you to speak at events. It doesn't always have to be our CEO or someone from marketing, but it was mostly about when we were doing our discovery with a candidate, we'd ask them about what things they were curious about or interested in and find ways to put that in their career path. Like if they were interested in maybe exploring teaching, we'd be like, well, maybe you could be a part of the certification program that we want to build for our partners. And basically, we would make room in whatever their role was for their career goals. And I think that's something you can do totally do. It doesn't feel scalable for a big company, but it is when you're a small company. And finally, one of my favorites actually is our recognition. I think everybody probably on this uh, call knows that recognition is important, particularly when it comes from our leaders. But what we did was actually we implemented a platform called Hey Taco. There are other ones out there, but it was essentially a way of offering kudos to someone when they helped you with something or they impressed you in some way. So you basically with Hey Taco, you get five tacos every day. They, you never got more. They always refreshed. You give all five to somebody like, thank you for helping me push this major bill. That's so great. Or thanks for helping me find that talk, uh, typo in that email and just give them one taco. But what we found is that in addition to the recognition and support that they were getting from management. They also had this really organic role that they were developing in the company because it was kind of like socially built. 
Um, we also had a taco store where you could trade in those kudos for uh, things that were really personal to our company, not just regular things. You could get an Apple Watch, but you could also trade it in to get a cocktail from the bar that was down the street from the WeWork that we worked at. Um, so it was really nice. I just think it helped to make the experience feel both organic and super customized to the individual. So would recommend personalizing that peer-to-peer -peer recognition. But as I said, I think one of the key advan advantages for startups beyond getting creative with the benefits is our ability to stay agile. There are a lot of bottlenecks in the recruiting process. And I think the more that we can shorten it and standardize it, the more that we can get to that yes with a candidate before they have to move on to the next um, opportunity. In fact, I read an article recently that said in the era of the Great Resignation, which is something that certainly affected many of the startups that I know, one of the things that hirees want is speed and communication. So why can't we just give it to them? I would say that as startups, we have... Um, not, not only can we, but we must, because that's the only way that we can stay competitive in that marketplace. So to do that, though, we needed to understand what we needed to standardize and learn. So here is the checklist that I was starting from. Things that, like, when I had to write my first offer letter, I didn't know what needed to go in it. But once we had all of these documents in place, it was much easier to move faster. And we were able to keep up with our growth needs and attrition when it happened, especially during the great resignation, especially this first step of having a well-researched roles, responsibilities, and your salary understanding before you ever published the job so that you could, you know, know who it was that was having sign off on this. Make sure that you were asking questions that made sense to the role, that if your salary was lower than the marketplace, that you knew who you were targeting and maybe you could wind, wind in the funnel at the top. Doing that and then having the offer letter, the welcome note, our employee handbook, our NDAs, our onboarding program all dialed in meant that we can move super fast. And one of the other things that helped us move super fast was to make sure that it happened digitally so that we didn't create drag in the process at any point. And the best actually example I'll share from that is um, a story from HelloSign. Um, we were in a major growth period at HelloSign and we wanted to invest in some key aspects of marketing. One of them that we knew was that we wanted to find uh, somebody to lead our content strategy. And for a company like HelloSign that's growing, and we know that we have to move fast. If we don't get to that yes quickly enough, we, there's actually a dollar value associated with that. So we knew when we met Kate that we wanted her. We knew that we wanted to, that she was looking at other jobs, that she was in multiple hiring cycles. And we wanted to, to get to her yes as, as fast as possible as well. But the only problem is by the time we sent Kate her offer letter, she was into the woods on a camping trip. Um, but fortunately, because the entire experience was digital, because she didn't have to wait to get to, um, you know, a fax machine to be able to sign her offer letter, she was able to, with her backpack on, sign her offer letter, come on board and emerge from the woods as our new content strategy lead. That wouldn't have been possible if we hadn't digitized all that. Um, I guess just the last point I want to make is that I, I think... It would be good to make sure that we mention that many of us are moving into this virtual workplace. I mean, even before the pandemic, IdeaScale was mostly a virtual collaboration uh, place. Dropbox was one of the first companies to announce that they were going virtual first after the pandemic started, meaning that the default was we would work from home and like come into the studios when it made sense. But if we're going to stay connected and create culture in this new virtual workplace, are there things that we need to do? I think one of the most like easy to do things that makes a lot of sense is making sure that we're allowing for random connection. Ideascale and Dropbox do this sort of lunch lotto that there's an app that will pair you up with someone within your organization randomly for a 30 minute chat. We're encouraged not to talk about work, although sometimes it comes up and sometimes new opportunities come from those conversations. There's also certainly the ability to do virtual events and activities. We did a paint night at Ideascale um, I did a boba baking workshop at Dropbox, but this helps to like give other people the opportunity to talk about something besides work in a facilitated way. Um, and it's also, I think, 
I think the most important part of that, the virtual first thing, is that you play a role as the employer in helping the employee understand how to make virtual first work for them. Whether that's focusing on how they make healthy boundaries or a healthy schedule for their life, or making sure that their home office has an audio system that is crisp and makes sense, or it's finding a way to establish core collaboration hours, you are part of that process. I am sure that Lily will also have some advice in this arena. Um, but one of the things I just want to mention before I think hand things off to her is that it, as Lily and I were talking and preparing for this session, that I had a lot of questions for her about what happens when you get to that scaled startup stage. So we're going to let her tell her story. But many of the things that she answers with are came out of the questions that came up in our conversations together. So Lily, why don't you start by telling us about Instacart scaling experience? Thank you so much, Jessica. So um, for Instacart, um, I joined in 2019. And then in, as everyone knows, COVID hit us in 2020 and 2021. And we, the Insta, Instacart, both a business and a, and a company, goes through a hyper growth phase. Um, our engineering group um, grows a couple time, uh, a couple times. And then it's, it's all of a sudden, when I look at people in my team, I, I realize I'm outnumbered. Um, every single person has to, uh, all people has to onboard three, four, or five different people um, that's newly joining us. And then it's in an increasing speed. And then while everything else is falling apart, right? our server is down and we are scaling our databases and and then the operationally we are not there yet. So um, what I realized along the way is um, you don't need to be perfect. And everyone heard the story like um, the startups grow perfectly. Uh, go up perfectly, that, that doesn't happen. In reality, everything is built incrementally. Uh, we start to build our increment, incrementally our process and our, our practices. Um, and then we also set expectation for every single one of the new hires that you are expect, this is the pace you're going in. You choose us because this is the experience is once in a lifetime that you will grow as a company a couple times um, in, a, in a year. And then um, be open to be wrong, because very likely we are, we are very wrong along the way as well. And then, but the most important part is we learn and collect ourselves and then, and, then, and then move on. And then um, also we let the people, everyone in the team know that um, probably after this, there's going to be no steady state. And we have to be mentally and physically prepared uh, to uh, just accept it as a truth. And then in the end is about who we define what we are and what do we do. And then instead of saying, this is why I do, this is not why I do, um, we want people to be a little bit more playful with their identity. And then and then that embed um, the whole growth mindset to everyone in the company. Okay, let's go to the next. So we were wondering how you do this at scale. So I was wondering what tips you had really. Okay. So a lot of people ask me this question, including Jessica, like, how do you hire a scale? Um, so first thing you will notice is uh, we are lacking interviewers because you have to hire four times more people. So the process wise, it just doesn't work anymore. And then the other problem we run into is where do you find those group of people? And, uh, you know, Silicon Valley um, is so, so competitive. Everyone is competing for talent and we want the best of the best. And then to solve this two problem, we actually are brainstorming as a leadership team. Um, we started thinking from the opposite side of things. Uh, instead of saying, who do you want to hire? How do you hire them quickly? We ask the question, why would top tier talent actually choose us? And then um, we thought about three things. Number one is hyper growth itself is, is, a, is, is something that will attract a lot of people. Uh, people want a lot more challenges, want a lot more growth, and they are bored with their current job, uh, might want a little bit spice in their life. So we anchor that uh, in, our, in our marketing and our vocabulary and our selling uh, to the candidate. Uh, the second thing is a lot of people um, want to work with someone that's top tier. And then uh, we know that people are inside the company are very passionate about the, about the mission. And then so to, to bring people the food so they can, they can spend the time with a lot of ones. Um, and then uh, especially during COVID, 
Uh, we bring food to people so that people can survive. Uh, we uh, bring work to the shoppers so the the, the shoppers have, um, have 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 money and the food on their their own table. So a lot of people buy in the vision, and then we double down our referral drive. We ask every single team to refer like top ten people. You you will die to work again, and then we really quickly find uh, gather hundreds of people we want to reach out for, regardless where they are, what the role is. And we start from there to find the right candidates going into our company. And then we also realize because the people who are referring are not the recruiters, are not the managers, are, are individual contributors and engineers on the front line. Uh, we realize people are better connected. And then uh, the, the close rate is five times more than the other, other, other channels. So that's after that, we find okay, there's some sweet spot. We can we can we can we can latch on. Then we start automating it. Uh, we start using software uh, to auto automate like the 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 emails, the response, and then the paperwork when they come in and the NDA. So that's why Hello Sign come into the picture and then help us greatly through the through the hyper growth phase. And then there's one thing I do want to call out. That's something I learned from our company COO. And then um, what she told me is for um, exceptional exceptional talent, do the unscalable things. We know everyone wants to automate them on the same time, but for people who are exceptional, you want to spend the time before the interview to talk to them ahead of time so they feel comfortable. You want to walk through them along the interview so that they are they, they get to know more people in the company and then you want to spend enough time and effort to um, help them overcome their hurdles and then be part of your company and then get to know your company culture ahead of time. Okay, next. Yeah, and then this comes up, of course, you talk about how to do it at scale, So, but then how do you keep the bar high as you grow? This is actually very hard because as you scale your practice, there's always a tendency that we optimize for speed versus quality. This is always like a com competing, um, uh, competing areas. Um, I think the, okay, great, awesome. So uh, one thing is the Carbolivian talent is uh, we want to find a spark. Um, what does spark mean is um, everyone has all their qualities. And if, if we look at every single accesses and then the person is just average everywhere, but they all meet the bar, uh, that's probably not the talent we want to bring in. We want to see someone who's not only meeting the bar, but in any one of the accesses we care about um, spike out. And that give the give us the confidence that this person is exceptional in some way, um, um, and then this person probably ca can carry that that quality into other places um, in the company as well. So because of the phase and the hyper growth and the chaos inside the company while we grow, uh, we lean forward to find people who has ownership and autonomy. And if you don't have the resource, go ask for it. If you you ask, nobody answered, you fight for it. I be very resourceful with the company when when everyone is super, super busy and spread really thin. And then um, we all know leadership actually oftentimes define the ceiling of your organization. So as a company, we hold an extremely high bar for senior leaders. And I, I know from the engineering side, our CTO interview every single engineer leader. Uh, no matter his frontline leader or like directors or VPs, he want to make sure through the interview, we not only pay attention to our leaders and their, not only their expertise and culture, but also we know we set a very high bar and that propagated down to every, sing every single uh, level uh, in the company. And we do know um, that A players attract A players when you have a critical mass of talent in uh, and the critical talent density uh, in your company is much easier to, uh, to attract uh, great people into your company again. And then, so we've got these great talents coming into the organization. What are the most important things that Instacart does to get right for them in their first two weeks? Yeah, this is this is super, super interesting. So um, I, 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 I work in a couple companies and I will say Instacart, this is a most interesting place in the first two weeks um, 
because of the complexity of the business. It's not a single business and with a single uh, target audience. It's a, it's a marketplace. More often than that, it's, it's, uh, it's more complex. It's a four-sided marketplace. There's a consumer side of things. There is a shopper side of things. There's enterprise and retailer side of things. And also we do we place ads for the CPG brands. As a result, the first day they come in, uh, we want to give them a bird eye view of what are the four sides of the business, what are our template metrics for each of the sides, and how do we define success, and how do you work as a consumer product and as an enterprise product, also as a platform product. And then the second piece we also lean on really heavily is tell we, we talk about company culture. This is a company is very very collaborative, uh, very innovative. At the same time, people are scrappy and then want to move really fast. At the same time, we want to build the relationship and then, and then bring people together. And on the other side, because our customer base are so diverse, it could be consumers, it could be shoppers, it could be retailers or CPG brands. And we want to embed the concept in, in from get start, get go, that customer obsession is, is, is absolutely the top priority for the company. And then the third thing is um, is also something that's very special about Insert is is there are new functions compared to a pure digital product that Insert embrace and incorporate in the business. For example, operations on a, in the field, or for example, like a business strategy people who is looking at a PL. So a lot of a lot of this function and the units work together collectively to make a thing when we enter a new market and then bring a new service together. So uh, that is a good learning point to to do to teach the new hires that hey, this is something new, and you don't be shocked when this person comes in knocking at your door. And then the fourth thing is when new people comes. And then when, when, when everything is moving super fast, they are, they are, they are very much um, shocked and then paralyzed, right? In order for us to smooth it out, we always find onboarding buddy. And this person will take you for lunch and then you, you celebrate your first uh, PR um, into, the, into the GitHub. Uh, we'll introduce you to the people who are, who are related so that you are much better positioned to succeed in the first weeks. We always want the first uh, first week ended with a high note, with the first PR, send it, uh, send it in, and then the, the, your first feature builds, and then everyone is super, super happy after that. And then after that is roll your sleep and go. And then we were talking about hiring and retention processes, but like, what are the best parts to automate? I will say in the very beginning, my biggest headache is paperwork, paperwork, paperwork. <laughs> yes, it is hard to find and it's often, uh, oftentimes missing. And then I forgot about them all the time when I join. And, and then we, the first thing we, we actually think about uh, automating is definitely paperwork. And then right after paperwork is, is training documents and training, training materials that you must get by before you can actually start doing your work. And then um, after these two processes, you, start, you can actually start doing your work and making sure your environment uh, is set up through a script that people can be productive really, really quickly. And then when you start having your environment ready, you can start making code, code changes. And then we want to automate the celebrations and the kudos and the launch post so that you have this very healthy flywheel from the moment you, you hit the hit hit start in the company to a place where you complete your first aha moment that, hey, I have achieved the first week with all the paperwork, all the trainings, all the PR uh, environment set up, and then I actually start generating value and feeling uh, and then other people celebrating. On your success. This whole feeling of success in a short period of time uh, is really, really important to us. And then once you've got that employee on board, is there technology that helps with employee performance and accountability as well? Of course, like a lot of a lot of them. Um, Hollow Sign is definitely one of them um, because it's, it's deployable. It's easy to use and deployable at scale. And then um, 
not only、um, we help each other to not be buried in the paperwork at the same time. It's just for overall visibility and then awareness that where things are at, so we can push people a little bit further along to be productive. And then oftentimes people ignore the small efficiency gains and say, "Hey, like just one more minute." And but in the very early days when everything is going at like super super high speed,、uh, small efficiency gains,、uh, a couple minutes here, a couple minutes there,、uh, all of this like twenty twenty things. It make a big difference and reduce the mental load from the employee and your team significantly. So that can focus on the most important thing, which I said just now is what's a business? How do you work with other people? How do you check in a first aid a PR to feel that recognition and the value generation really, really quickly? It's especially important actually when we are remote, because、yes. nobody are at your back and helping hand like hand holding you. Over this paperwork and process, and you really need automation、um, to help each other、um, in a much more distributed working environment. Well, that is where our original set of content questions ended.、Um, but we definitely want to remind you that hopefully you have some questions that haven't been answered yet. Feel free to put them in our Q and A feed. But I was wondering if we could.、Um, Ask you a few more questions, Lily.、Um, one of the ones that I was wondering is like, do you have a favorite onboarding story of somebody you onboarded where it、um, worked out really well? Um, I do have a staff iOS engineer, and then I remember when he came in, um, our HR just sent a bunch of. Emails with him. This is a couple of paper we want to sign, and then the first couple of days you are going to do these trainings, and the schedules are are just set up. The first day he got in, he was really motivated.、Um, he come in and start saying hi to the team. The second day,、um, he joined the company, and then very quickly he set up his、um, environment. And I remember, like the fourth day, he sent out the PR. I was super shocked. Wow, I was like, this is. Really, really fast. Wow! And, then, and then I remember in the, in the, in the old days, I spent the first week just to set up, get gaining the permissions, and then set up my environment. And I set that to be my success story instead of having my first PR. That was a success success story.、Mm. Well, and one of my favorite points that you made is that we all think that once you're in a hyper growth stage, that you you everything you do has to scale. But your point that you know for really exceptional people, when you can identify that A list talent, you can do unscalable things. Do you have an example of an unscalable thing that you did?、Uh, I just did one <laughs> to a candidate.、Uh, I fly over to meet a candidate in person.、Mm. I do think、uh, in this world, meeting someone three D is so much better than two D. And then you get to know the person in, in the hall, and then start picking up their body body language, and then、yeah. some jokes, and, and see through the surface, a facade, and then and then start to peek into their personality, and then it's really important.、Uh, we oftentimes send send our candidate Instacart orders,、uh-huh. so they can get a feeling of oh. Um, I just talked to you on the phone about this, and then fifteen minutes later, this is. Indeed, at the at the front front door of your house, and then this is magical experience. And get them to use this opportunity to help them experience it a little bit more. And then there are other times we、um, just invite them to the team meeting.、Mm. And, then, and then a lot of time people feel afraid when they move to a new environment, and they don't know who to expect. Who are, who are this group of new people, right? And then. And then we want we want to create this environment that hey we are all human beings join、yeah. us and see what we are doing right here and、um, people people receive it really really well and after that is a lot of talking is、um, is trying to find a fit and I want I oftentimes want the people I hire into my team knowing that、uh, we are the best options for them. Um, in their journey, instead of the other way around, is they are the best candidate we can find for our journey. Reverse the language and then start、yeah. telling 
doesn't really find the right fit for them. So they they know from day one that there's someone in the company uh, that truly care about them and looking out for their own success versus their your own. I really like that idea too of like interview tourism, you know, instead of, it's like you really get to be part of the team for a second instead of just answering a bunch of questions about what it would hypothetically be like to join that team. Um, really good examples of how to make somebody feel special. Mm -hmm. uh, well, hopefully you all uh, can stay connected to us. Keep asking us questions. We're still happy to answer them. We did want to leave you with a few resources. Most of these are from uh, Hello Sign and Dropbox. Things like the onboarding checklist will be really useful to you. It gives you all of the things that you might want to know to be prepared for when you're ready for hiring, um, as well as other best practices that have been charted over the years. The HR automation toolkit, super useful because you can sort of tailor it to your own needs, talk about where you're at, what you have figured out, figure out what you need to do still, as well as giving you several templates that you can use. And then Dropbox has um, a virtual first toolkit they've used to both as their own resource for being a virtual first company, but it also helps um, anybody who wants to look at it elsewhere, talking about ways to do communications, uh, team building exercises, everything like that. So feel free, as I said, to, you know, look out your phones, use the QR codes, but if that's not your type of thing, feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn, uh, mention the session, and I will send all of these resources to you. And thank you so much, Lily, for participating in this uh, workshop with me. And thank you everyone for joining. Thank you so much, Jessica. And thank you everyone for joining us today and hear our stories.